Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest episode of Unlearn series. I'm Omkar from Beehive, and I'm here to source and share the best practices from the world of organizational development and learning and development. Today, we have with us a very special guest and one of the early adopters of Beehive, Mr. Vikas Bhatia. Vikas is the managing director at Rico Industries, a leading engineering company. In fact, prior to this, he was a managing consultant and an executive coach with Pragati Leadership, where he helped business leaders and organizations to evolve and transform for growth. In his career spanning over 27 years, he's worked with large multinational companies in various roles, right from program management, consulting, sales PD, to ERP implementation, to moreover, new product introduction management. He has been visiting faculty at Symbiosis Institute of Management, SIBM, SCIT, and several other IIT, SOMs, and SPGEN. Uh, Vikas is very passionate about education, health, and wellness, and most importantly, human development potential. Today, we are going to be talking with Vikas about a very important factor which determines employee productivity, employee engagement, and moreover, organizational effectiveness, workplace camaraderie. So thank you so much, Vikas, for joining in today and taking out the time. Thanks, Omkar. It's a pleasure. So, you know, Vikas, I want to start off by revealing a very interesting statistics to you that mm -hmm. we think that we spend most of our time with family and less with at the workplace. It's a common perception, but uh, just reading this McKinsey report of 2019, which states that, you know, 44% of the time, if you spend with your spouse or with your family, 42 to 43% is spent with colleagues. And if you're talking about the Indian workplace culture, we are very collectivistic in nature. So that means that making friends at the workplace is more of a second nature. But friendship at the workplace and workplace camaraderie might have slightly different definitions. But I want to get it off the bat over here. That do you think that having a great camaraderie, employee uh, workplace camaraderie, does it actually affect employee productivity in any case? And does it contribute to the top line or reduces the bottom line at, at your organization? Yeah, Umkar, yeah, that's a wonderful uh, you know, question to reflect on. So yeah, looking at those statistics, I'm not surprised. Maybe I was thinking the number would be 60% time with your colleagues and uh, less with your wife and uh, family or spouse and family. And I think uh, uh, in my career now spanning almost 30 years, uh, what I have seen is that the friends you make at workplace um, have, have a much higher chance of survival than probably the friends you made at college. Yeah, uh, that's because there is so much one can uh, learn from each other and there's so much care you can receive from each other. So for example, the friends I uh, made at workplace in my first job at Philips, they are still friends, right? We still meet on uh, various family occasions. And, and that kind of friendship was very special, not that friendships made in the recent, uh, jobs afterwards are uh, not relevant. They definitely are also relevant. Um, how does that in affect the productivity or the top line? Uh, there are several studies which have been conducted by you know various research institutes across the world uh, where they have looked at how the workplace um, you know relationships affect your performance at job and in fact if you notice it's also a question which comes in great places to work survey and in q12 that do you have a friend at place because clearly we are social animals and, and being social animals, we find a place which is more inclusive, which is more caring, which is more, um, um, you know, easy to integrate with. You find that your productivity is definitely much better. You, you end up, uh, you know, enjoying your work because you are supported and you are, um, finding that people are appreciating our work or people are, you know, uh, helping you through some tough times. So, you know, whenever you feel stuck, you might find that someone might just come and help you get unstuck. And that's a, a beautiful thing to have. So clearly, yes, um, whatever we believe and whatever I have experienced, I think there is a, you know, convergence there that having a workplace which has which allows for more friendships and camaraderie to build in 
there are more uh, engagement and more productivity and more uh, output. I am complete, uh, you know, uh, bought, uh, bought into this particular thought. No, I think I think it's it's very special because as you said that you know you are still your friends right from your Philips time. I think it's a great time to also maybe exchange notes, reflect about how careers have evolved as yeah. folks might might turn into leaders as, as yeah. the career grows. But uh, okay, all right, you know, there's a there's a very segue question from you because these workplace camaraderie normally happens at places which uh, which are far more progressive and kind of consciously promotes it. Whereas, let's say in India itself, there are quite a lot of legacy organizations which are more or less a stagnant culture. Culture mm-hmm. that being set by their promoters 60, 50, 30 years ago. That kind of culture tends to prevail and cuts across decades. Now, you know, the times are rapidly changing. VUCA world at its best right now in 2022. How do you, how do you see these cultures actually becoming less stagnant and, uh, and become more adaptive to the VUCA world in a, in a pursuit of promoting workplace camaraderie? Yeah, I, I do not know whether uh, uh, workplace camaraderie is the only thing which is affecting them to respond to these challenges which the VUCA world is presenting. But definitely there is a whole lot of uh, cultural change which is being affected by digital. Mm-hmm. So when I say digital means everything which is happening, so whether it is the way we interact with our customers, the way we interact within, with, with each other, the way we are using um, um, tools like SAP or Microsoft Office. So clearly, uh, the next gen, uh, the, the people who have entered into the workforce in the last five to 10 years are definitely adapting to this much more better than those who entered the workforce uh, like people like me who are 30, 40 years um, into the career and, and they are finding it a little more, um, you know, old mindsets prevailing. So yes, um, command and control uh, was a legacy of uh, 60s and 70s, yeah. which is getting progressively dismantled because you no longer can work in a centralized, centralized way. And so there are uh, these tools and including the tool which you guys have created Beehive is a wonderful tool to decentralize, to share information, uh, to uh, you know believe that more can be achieved if all of us can pull our resources together rather than um, recreating a silo mindset, which is also part of the uh, command and control uh, mindset which was prevalent there. So even the legacy organizations are changing. Yeah, Rico is itself, I would call as a legacy organization. But the very fact that we are adopting to this uh, tools and mindsets and slowly working our way, I think uh, I can also think and hope that other organizations also are emulating. And I have seen several, uh, you know, brick and mortar businesses uh, also adopting these tools and trying to bring this cultural change in their organizations. So, so I'm pretty hopeful that uh, the legacy will be shown out and we'll have a, a completely new culture uh, coming. So, you know, as this whole command and culture, uh, command and control culture is progressively getting dismantled, um, I want to understand from your perspective as a business leader that what are your efforts to uh, to promote workplace camaraderie, especially when, when you know, uh, being friends with boss is always considered great but what is the boss doing in order to promote friendships within within the uh-huh. organization that's that's a good question and and, and of course uh, at the at the top you also got to be focused on business and at the same time you'll still need to create a culture so it's a, it's a very fine balance so uh, so we at rico have been uh, doing a mix of both so while we stay extremely focused on business and the business results we do believe that uh, creating this work workplace relationships and ca- camaraderie is very important so right from you know participating in surveys as to how people feel about working at rico uh, encouraging managers to create those bonds and uh, you know create um, uh, you know diverse teams uh, to to encourage cross functional teams to solve certain problems uh, to go out and enjoy certain social events and uh, cultural events like Diwali and uh, Christmas. So we have a lot of those kind of structured initiatives. And of course, then a large part of it depends on the employee 
himself or herself how much of that they want to uh, you know devote their time but i see that networks do happen you know whether we like it or not so whether it is a, a department network or whether it is a, um, a group of people who are from the same uh, background or share some similar interest like trekking so you do find those kind of bonds prevailing and as a ceo uh, or as a head of the organization all we have to do is to let it happen not come in the way yeah yeah and and when that happens and when they can see that they can leverage um, you know they can take help from each other for some of the challenges or problems they might be facing whether it's a temporary or a long one uh, you see that yeah the organization is benefiting but of course um, there are many organizations who would set certain you know um, boundaries you can't talk to this department or you can't talk to that person so one thing is to be mindful that you are not uh, actually creating silos and you're not trying to you know create a divide and rule uh, culture uh, so so integration happens when you actually encourage uh, people to talk to each other and create some kind of a interdisciplinary um, uh, you know actions and at the same time hr is also creating certain initiatives which gives people to interact in informal ways and that's the kind of um, actions we have been taking in at our organization and uh, yeah so all these uh, digital and non digital tools do help so for example when we are under the restrictions and people were largely working from home uh, we were still celebrating certain events online yeah and and there are ways to uh, promote that kind of uh, interaction among the people i think uh, there was one of the biggest surveys like when we were talking about surveys one of the biggest reasons why employees leave their jobs is because they have bad bosses and uh, one of the best reasons why employees actually stay back at the workplace is not because of their fantastic salary but it's about because they have a few friends at the organization which uh, which is very heartbreaking for them to leave so um, you know on on that note when we are talking about friendships and workplace camaraderie there's the most important precedence towards promoting this kind of a workplace camaraderie is trust and and a lot of mutual respect right so i i like to be friends or i need like to have professional great relationships with people who i normally yeah. trust and that of kind of snowballs into into camaraderie so as a founding block of workplace camaraderie how do you start establishing trust within the organization and a fair sense of mutual respect amongst uh, amongst employees so that you know these trust and mutual respect can then gradually develop onto camaraderie and then gradually develop onto high productivity right so uh, you know trust itself is a very um, a complex uh, emotion and and the way human beings trust each other Uh, can be modeled in several ways but one of the things which um, i believe is that your trust largely depends on the credibility you bring to the table so for example if a, a colleague a has and and, and uh, on top of things and delivers as per his or her commitment i think the credibility goes up and the trust factor goes up yeah uh, similarly mutual respect so in fact we uh, recently started a series for all our employees um, and that was a small training capsule called being a professional mm. yeah what does it mean being a professional so keeping your word or you know delivering your goods whatever it might be but there are several factors um, which contribute to the build up of the trust uh, credibility is one of them respect is another yeah and um, uh, you know being transparent is third so all these factors combine to build trust and um, whenever there are any breakdown of trust this is because there has been some misunderstanding or lack of uh, transparency or communication so between all the internal stakeholders and also the external stakeholders how do you build that trust and confidence is something which we fundamentally ask our people uh, and try to see if there can be better mechanisms um and uh, of course as i said transparency is about sharing so whatever i am i'm doing i'm i'm making it known to my ecosystem and it's not there's not nothing behind the scenes kind of uh, manipulations 
so being absolutely transparent absolutely honest uh, being caring for your team member respecting for your team member and at the same time delivering what you have committed so being a professional so those kind of qualities are very important in the build up of trust between individuals or build up of trust between various functions within the organization so for example um, when will a finance uh, team trust the sales team or when will the sales team deliver the deli uh, delivery team or the project team is when they hold their word true yeah. now of course we all have our own challenges and and misunderstandings and sometimes we may um, end up making some mistakes but being open to it and owning it up again builds your credibility now that's that's not easy all the time it's, it's not something which you can expect every single individual to do but if you want the culture to be having more mutual trust we need to have people who actually demonstrate or practice this values uh, consistently and the more they do it the more trust built up and more uh, friendships at work will happen and more productivity will happen or no, i think that that sums up everything so so well um you know that that whole linkage of uh, the trust chain if i would like to say yes. is, um, the marketing guy the sales guys trusting the marketing guys the marketing guys trusting the content guys the delivery guys trusting the sales guys and everybody finally trusting each other right. so i think this has been extremely insightful this has been very helpful uh, your best practices to develop workplace camaraderie at the workplace so thank you so much for taking out the time and sharing your wisdom with everybody and i'm i'm truly indebted to you for for experimenting new age technologies and and promoting young entrepreneurship so thank you once again for your time and all the all the support you've given us Thanks, Omkar. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you.